Good afternoon, Ben. Great to meet you. Uh, welcome to another episode of Innovations and Integrations presented by Kuzi Companies. Uh, ben, could you just introduce yourself and uh, talk a little bit about yourself and what your role is at Converse now? Yeah, of course, uh, Ryan. It is a pleasure to be on. I appreciate you and Kuzi hosting me for the afternoon. So I serve as Vice President of Marketing at Converse Now. Um, for those who have not heard of us, Converse Now is an artificial intelligence company that uh, focuses on voice AI for restaurants. So we automate phone and drive-through orders for large restaurant chains. Um, a flagship customer of ours is Domino's Pizza. If you were to call a Domino's in about a sixth of the country, uh, we're live in what, more than a thousand Domino stores at this point, you would speak with a virtual assistant instead of speaking with a person who works at the store. The immediate thing that comes to mind are those frustrating automated phone systems that we all hate. I can assure you that this is a grand leap away from that. This is truly conversational AI where you can ask questions, you can change your mind, you can speak with people in the background on your end. It's just like speaking to a person and it creates a win-win-win for guests, for staff, and for owners alike. Guests no longer have to worry about hold times or missed calls. St um, staff uh, enjoy the much needed additional time by not having to worry about answering the phone. And owners and operators are seeing um, excellent uh, sales growth and average ticket growth with our service. So, um, in short, we are voice AI shaping the future of restaurants and uh, very happy with the impact that we've had um, with a number of the country's top 100 restaurant brands and for the impact that Voice AI will continue to make on not just the restaurant sector, but really any um, consumer facing sector moving forward. And for the phone product, we simply integrate with virtually any major telephony system. So whereas beforehand, restaurants were limited to the number, not, not necessarily the number of phone lines they had because restaurants could get as many phone lines as they were willing to pay for, but they were really limited by the number of people who could physically stop what they were doing and answering the phone. So you can have 20 phone lines, but most restaurants do not have 20 people laying around just to sit there and answer the phone. So in this case, um, just imagine having a team member who can take limitless calls at once with remarkable accuracy and being able to handle as many conversations as they would need. I don't know if any, if you've seen the movie Her, but um, there's, a, there's a scene where uh, the AI um, voiced by, I, I believe it was Charlize Theron, but I'm not sure, um, was speaking with the main character and he said, how many more other people are you talking to right now? Thinking that they had a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And she said, sure. I'm speaking with 23,292,651 people. And it's sort of like that, although we yeah. don't expect any kind of uh, non-transactional relationship between our AI and the guests that our, our customers serve. So in any case, um, yes, the AI uh, takes, takes those order calls. It can take also a range of non-order calls. So if you want to know, you know, hey, what time do you close? Or, you know, hey, um, like, can I get the pizza, my pizza delivered to this address or something, then that's something our AI can handle. Whereas if you're working at, let's just say a Domino's store, it take, you're on what's called the make line. You're really busy making pizzas. Well, you have to stop what you're doing. You have to take off your gloves. You have to wash your hands. You have to answer the phone. You rush through the conversation because you need to get back to making pizzas. The customer's not happy. You're not happy. You place the order. Then you wash your hands again, you put the gloves on, you're back to the make line. Imagine having to do that every 30 seconds um, right. at the peak of dinner hour. It, it, it gets cumbersome after a while and people wonder why there's so much burnout in the, uh, in the restaurant world. So yeah. we alleviate that pain. In both cases, the guests will always have the opportunity to speak with a human being. We are very cognizant of the fact that we're in this transitional phase where virtually every major restaurant brand is experimenting with voice AI and set to roll it out for this to become the default way of ordering food. But there's a lot of people who really want to have that human experience and we're not gonna take that away from them if they don't want it. What people will find is that working with AI is 
an incredible experience that can sometimes be more pleasurable than um, ordering food from a regular team member because you don't have someone who's rushing you through the call and it's a voice that you can easily understand, etc. cetera. Um, but in any case, we just, we, we, we hold the guest experience uh, far and away as our highest priority. So uh, I'm gonna take a step back here. You know, we are an integration company. We're the guys that boots on the ground. Uh, people that go out and we do all the installations, the hardware installations and make sure everything is installed as it should be and, and make sure it's running there on the front lines. And as you would imagine, we're very people focused, uh, but, you know, we're using technology as our vehicle to employ more people and, and to keep people um, happy and, you know, to continue to add to our growing team. So being so people focused, talk to me about, you know, you guys have multiple layers of this. So let's talk about uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, technology has two focuses in the, the restaurant space. One is to improve the uh, customer experience and one is to improve the employee experience. So let's talk about the customer experience uh, on the person, you know, kind of usually that's at, at the store level, you know, when someone comes in, you know, they're interacting with the, with your gadget at the at the drive through. But this goes on beyond that. And it's, it's improving the employee experience or the customer experience uh, when they're calling in and that free order because it's such a big part of the business now, you know, sometimes up to 75 percent in the pizza space. I'm guessing it's closer to 90 to 100 percent. So talk about how your uh the user experience as that goes and kind of walk me through that. Yeah, of course. So in, in referring to the guest experience, we've likely all been there before. I'm seeing the American flag in your background as a warm blooded American. I am sure that at some point in your lifetime, you have tried to order a pizza at peak dinner hour on a Friday, um, whether it be for friends or family game night, what have you. Um, you, you're you so excited about having a pizza delivered to your house and just making that Friday night so special. Well, um, that has likely, especially in the last couple of years, come with a lot of anxiety in, is my call going to get picked up? Uh, so there are so many occasions where restaurants are simply understaffed and the phones will be ringing off the hook and a store that should normally have eight people in it during a peak hour will have three, maybe four. And those people just are already up to their eyeballs in orders and they just can't afford to take time away to pick up the phone. And if they do, um, they're going to rush through that order. So what, what our AI does is it completely removes that pain from the guest, from the, from the guest's standpoint. It doesn't matter when you call in, your order is going to get placed in the same way that if you place that order online, okay, it's going to get placed. You might be asking yourself, well, why doesn't everyone order online? Well, a lot of people simply don't want to order online because they want that high touch experience that comes with ordering food from a restaurant. They want to speak with someone or in our case, something beyond just that transactional pressing of buttons that you would do on an app. They might want to customize their order in a way that you might not be able to do online. They might have a specific sure. um, modifier or a specific way that they like things done that you just simply can't do online. And you're not, you don't necessarily trust that it will happen in the notes. If you know, the restaurant even allows you to add notes in their online system. Um, so the, from the guest standpoint, they're, 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 they're not going to be, waiting on hold for minutes at a time. They're not going to have to try and call only to get hung up on. It's, you know, it, it allows them to have the peace of mind in knowing the order is going to get placed. For staff, it, we talked about it a bit earlier, but it, it relieves a very necessary burden that they've previously had on them. They're, they're already picking up the slack for what the 25 to 50% of people who aren't there because of this immense labor shortage. And this gives them the freedom to be able to focus on the task at hand, which is making pizzas, right? Yeah. And um, just to, to clarify as well, we work with menu concepts across the board, pizza, um, burgers, Chinese sandwiches, yeah. what have you. So we just use the pizza <clears throat> example because it's yep. a very easy one to illustrate. Yes. So let's talk about that. So, you know, we, I, I always like love to correct people when they say, Hey, we're taking jobs away. I'm like, well, we're creating AI. We're creating 
these technology experiences to actually improve people's experiences and to create more jobs. So let's talk about the maybe some challenges you guys have. I mean, obviously you mentioned uh, Domino's, which is as big as they come in the pizza space, and we can use pizza as an example. How are you guys helping protect these folks that aren't burdened with uh, the challenge of taking those phone calls? How do, is there a ceiling and is there a floor that your guys' AI has so that you know there's not too much throughput and all of a sudden they, they, they can't fulfill the orders because the demand is so high? So you bring up a, a very, very good topic here that is top of mind for anyone in the AI world, which is the myth about AI, you know, being thought to take away jobs. Um, our, we speak to that very easily right now because for the past several years at this point, you look at virtually any restaurant or any service company out there and there is a help wanted sign at the door that has been there okay. for as long as anyone on that team can remember because they simply cannot hire enough people. So first and foremost, it, it's, it's very important to note that AI above anything else is supporting the jobs that do exist. And that look, if people wanted these jobs um, that AI is handling right now, they would have taken them, but companies, restaurants still cannot hire a sufficient amount of people to operate and that AI has become a necessary lifeline for these owners and their respective staff to thrive in an environment where they would not otherwise be operationally sustainable. So um, AI is allowing people to enjoy a quality of life that they would never otherwise be able to do, especially in an understaffed environment. Um, yeah. That said, it's also giving restaurants a very necessary lifeline to stay financially sustainable. So I was just speaking with um, a franchisee earlier who has been working with us since May. Uh, he has four stores and his, his, he's lost about 25% of his staff to the natural churn. They've just left their jobs and he he's told us that there is no way that he could get back up to that number because it's so hard to hire people right now. And even when you do, how do you afford them? So what AI has done is it's really, it, it, it's filled that gap. He hasn't needed to backfill those positions and hire for roles that would otherwise be tremendously difficult to hire for. Um, his, his service times are better than they were before. Pizzas are getting made faster. So when you talk about throughputs, this is a way to make things more efficient. So let's say that you, you know, you have five people on staff, right? You have to account for those five people only being about, you know, a very theoretical number. Let's say that those five people are only going to be 50% productive because they're going to be spending half of their time answering the phone. Well, all of a sudden you throw voice AI into the mix. Those five people are now hundred percent productive. So it's effectively like having 10 people. So when you talk about throughput, the ceiling is lifted tremendously. We, I have not been privy to any conversations where a restaurant owner is telling us we're getting too much demand. We have to turn off AI or slow it down. Um, that's a very sure. happy problem to have. We have, sure. I have not personally experienced that with any of the customers yeah. that we have served. So as you guys onboard a, a new customer and a new partner, um, you know, there's obviously a huge learning for you. You're going in and you're experiencing what the brand does and having their operations and everything and how you become, you know, extension of that and actually an enhancement of that. So, you know, let's say you guys are going in and we'll use pizza as an example. It's the easy one and top of mind here. And, you know, you guys are out, you're taking in 50 orders an hour and whether the five people that are there are able to, you know, sauce those pizzas and topping those pizzas and everything and everything, uh, but the belt can only push through 35. Is, is that part of your guys' learning process is to figure out where those outliers are on, on the front end? Or, or is that something you haven't gotten there yet, which is fine? I mean, evolution. so we, we will always work directly with our operators and our customers, and our, our customers, I'm sorry, to understand all of their operations, obviously everything within their tech stack, but everything within their, the, the customer journey, so to speak, so that we are inserting our AI into a system that is going to preserve, if not enhance the overall guest experience. 
So looking into the example you noted about understanding how many pizzas can go through the belt at the same time, we have yet to experience uh, a circumstance where we're giving our customers too much demand. So sure. yes, that is something that we discuss, absolutely, yeah. because we wanna understand every single touch point that we're responsible for. Yeah. And we wanna make sure that we're preserving that experience and making sure that staff are able to fulfill every order that they get. Um, yeah. To be honest, what what's top of mind for us is not necessarily the maximum amount of orders that the restaurant can take at a time, but for each individual conversation that takes place to make sure that we, as Converse Now, are a true extension of the brand that we are yeah. serving so that the orders are taken accurately and that the orders are taken um, efficiently and that they are effectively communicated over the cloud into the POS the way that they need to be read. So, and that we're, you know, working with their coupons, for example. So you have a company like Domino's national global brand. Franchisees have a bunch of different coupons. So a coupon in California will definitely be different than a coupon that might be offered in North Carolina um, if they're just regional coupons. So we work with them to make sure that those individual coupons, promotions, fundraisers, what have you, are all custom tailored into, into their stores. So as you talk about user experience and everything, and you used the example earlier, say someone can call and say, hey, how late are you open tonight? And, you know, you have a thousand restaurants you're located in and, you know, a th there's a thousand locations, you know, maybe you have 60 franchisees that are represented over that thousand. Are you guys individually going to each location and, and having a device and having something specific to each location? How does that work? That's just interesting to me that you guys are able to customize something where, you know, one in New York might be open till 4 a.m., but here in Columbus, Ohio, you know, things shut down at one. What does that look like for you guys and how does that work? Yeah, so it, you know, we're, we're a digital service. So, but for the most part, a, a fix can be done completely remotely. Um, so as far as operations go there, that's, that's quite easy for us to handle. Uh, we have a dedicated customer success and customer engagement team where we are personally reaching out to the franchisees and their, and to, by extension, their staff to assess what's going well, what's not going well, what needs to be changed. Do you, we sent out a mailer a little while ago saying, update us on your holiday hours because we know that your holiday hours are gonna be impacted by Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, so that we can program our AI to be functional accordingly. By being proactive in that way and by communicating with our, our customers who are the owners and operators, um, we make sure that we're on the same page and that we address issues become the act before they actually become issues. So that, that level of service is something we pride ourselves on. Look, the restaurant industry is defined by service. People, yeah. yes, people dine out for the convenience of it, but people also dine out because they, they want to be served. They want that high touch, personable experience that comes with the hospitality world. And we embody those characteristics as Converse Now, and we serve our customers in the same way that we would want them to serve their customers, which is to be mm -hmm. warm, genuine, transparent, and genuinely caring about the experience that they offer. Yeah. So you keep using the word journey, whether it's customer journey or employee journey and everything. I, I love that word. Tell me a little bit about you know the Converse Now journey. How did we get started? how we get to where we're at today. Um, yeah, tell me about that and, and how you guys started and how, and how you guys have uh, transitioned to where you are now. Absolutely. So Converse Now began in 2018. It was founded by our co-founders and current CEO, COO, and CPO. We have Vinay Shukla, who's our co-founder CEO, and we have Rahul Agarwal, who is our COO and CPO uh, chief product officer. They are lifelong friends um, who both met in school. They went to the Indian equivalent of MIT. And okay. uh, they started in the corporate world, um, one working at, bo both of them working at um, very renowned groups. I think one was at Barclays, one might've been at Unilever. 
Uh, and then they decided to launch a venture together that was in the software space. Um, that was called Endeavor Software Technologies. They successfully ran that for 16 years before it was acquired by Gempact. Uh, they then got the entrepreneurial itch two years later and started Converse Now. Um, they, their first hire uh, was a friend um, in Bangalore who was one of the pioneers of Samsung's Bixby campaign. And Converse Now started as a voice AI service to effectively translate a lot of user instruction manuals that you would get for appliances. So like if you needed to do a quick fix in your dishwasher, right? Instead yeah. of leafing through a ridiculously long instruction manual, you could effectively ask our AI, what do I do? And the AI would parse through the manual and give you the answer. Um, that, you know, got some traction, but where they really found their calling was in restaurants and that there was a serendipitous experience where they fell into the restaurant industry, as I will put it, and it absolutely took off. They reconfigured the AI over the course of 18 months um, in this dark mode. And by the and by the time that Converse now launched in its first store, it was, I want to say, March of 2020, literally as the pandemic was hitting everyone worldwide and restaurants were between a rock and a hard place. And you could not have timed it any better. Um, RAI came to the rescue of hundreds and now thousands of restaurant owners who were facing all sorts of problems that AI became the miracle pill in solving. So um, the pandemic affected many, um, but it gave us a tremendous tailwind in giving us the traction that we have today. It's been an incredible journey thus far. Um, I personally have been with the company since uh, September of 2021. My career thus far has been in hospitality marketing. So I worked with Princess Cruises and MGM Resorts and several groups in the startup space uh, prior to joining Converse Now. And I will personally attest that all of that uh, monologue about Converse now wanting to truly be that hospitality brand. We mm -hmm. embody that in our culture internally. Um, I've worked yeah. with restaurants for my entire career and every, every bit of the importance that restaurants value in how they treat their customers is how we treat ours. Yeah, I appreciate that for sure. So you just talked about the evolution and kind of how you guys went from this, uh, you know, uh, user manual replacement product, which if I have a manual, there's about a 30 second chance that I'm, I mean, I'm spending 30 <laughs> seconds on it and then I'm just winging it. Unless it's a yeah. kid's toy, then I'm going to probably spend half the time going through it because they make those things <laughs> more difficult than they need to be. <laughs> but you guys evolved into this, um, you know, voice uh, AI product where you're helping, you know, eliminate the need for your people in call centers, et cetera. So what's the future look like? What, what do you guys see five years, next year, five years from now? I mean, you guys continue to grow and involved to meet the needs. And as we know, these needs are not changing. They're going to continue to accelerate. Yeah, um, great question about future outlook. So look, we've been calling it a labor shortage for a long time. Um, I don't necessarily know if that's the most appropriate term to describe yeah. something uh, that is simply what too many people coin as the new normal. Uh, Right. It's clear that there's a lot of jobs out there that people had before that they don't want anymore. And yeah. that restaurants across the country and globe need to implement workarounds, um, in this case, technology that will allow them to make up for this gap. And the restaurant of the future is a restaurant that still holds the guest experience near and dear and a priority over anything else. Um, but the restaurant of the future is also a restaurant that utilizes technology in a way that preserves that guest experience while at the same time maintaining the operations and financial sustainability they need to serve today's guests and the guest of the future. So virtually any major restaurant chain at this point, at least in the US, is entertaining talks piloting and or ramping up the use of voice AI service. And it is only, 
it is imminent that voice AI will become the mainstream de facto default, whatever you want to call it, way of ordering food um, over the phone so that restaurants can simply utilize the staff that they have. It's, it's become yeah. a proven solution at this point over the couple of years that it has been around. Um, that said, AI, voice AI specifically is still in its infancy. So there's tremendous room for growth. Um, right now, you're seeing it in a lot of the bigger chains, right? These are places with hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of locations. Um, the independent restaurant owners of the world might have to wait a little bit just simply because, you know, the technology is difficult to develop and it needs to be developed at scale right now. But in the same way that apps were, you know, the newest thing that required a lot of, you know, custom engineering really not that long ago, what, like 15 years ago, um, right. you're, you're seeing that with voice AI. So, uh, it's, it's necessary for targeted voice AI companies to serve their respective verticals. So in our, in our case, right, we serve restaurants and people probably ask, well, okay, there's, there's Siri, there's Alexa, there's Google voice. How come they're not serving restaurants? Um, if you think about the complexity of human conversation, it is very complex to put it lightly. And these larger tech organizations uh, have a lot of hurdles when it comes to serving these specific niches. It might not necessarily fulfill their business needs. They might not necessarily have the teams already dedicated to fulfilling these verticals. But in our case, the case of our competitors, right, who are solely dedicated to serving restaurants, that's where AI has that language expertise and has really been able to thrive um, based on, you know, serving these restaurants, individual menus and the, their individual customers needs. needs. Converse now is a service company. We are looking to serve um, any organization that has a consumer facing aspect to their business. That said, we're going to make sure that each of our customers is not just happy, but raving about the product and service that we provide before we can consider branching off. So in the short term, um, just continuing our, our great growth within restaurants. And as we look further out, right, there's limitless potential for how voice AI can affect the guest experience in not just restaurants, but in any consumer facing aspect. Yeah, that's uh, it's, it's funny because as you were talking through that and you were talking about, um, you know, the evolution and, and everything that, uh, Converse now offers, you know, uh, it's evolving. And as you mentioned, AI and technology enhancements in general, they're, it's, it's going to become just like the oven or the deep fryer or the POS or the KDS. It's going to be part of every business tech package and these smart restaurants. Um, so tell me, as you guys have evolved, you know, you're always overcoming obstacles and hurdles. You guys have, you know, look a lot different today than you did, you know, five years ago and five years from now, you're going to look a lot different now what your goal is. Tell me about some of these challenges you guys have on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm sure that the target is moving constantly for you. I mean, shoot, how much time do you have? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so every restaurant is different and every guest they serve is different. That, that needs to be top of mind for us every single day. So while there's, you know, a lot of, um, Form, there's a lot of formulas that we can follow and a lot of templates that we can create with regards to, okay, this is, we're good to use, we're good to insert AI via Olo in this way, or, okay, this restaurant's, restaurant's using this telephony system. Um, that's pretty standardized, but let's say that we are working with, you know, our third pizza concept, right? Um, or our fourth. So were the three pizza concepts that I can talk about publicly. We're, we're working with Domino's, of course, we're working, Fazoli's is Italian, but they serve pizza. And then we actually just yesterday announced our work with Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza. Um, they okay, are that's, using- That's exciting. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. They're using us um, company-wide across all 60 of their stores uh, across the US. So let's say that we're working with a another pizza concept, right? And we are working with many, more behind the scenes. Well, they have an, a, a large pizza for them, um, might be called something different. Um, they, 
of course, we'll have a bunch of different specialty pizzas that aren't, you know, labeled the same way as it would be labeled at Anthony's or at Domino's. So what we are tasked with is how to most efficiently transfer the knowledge that our AI already has from previous pizza concepts into this new one. So you have a base layer, right? Let's just say it's 50% of general conversational terms that apply when someone orders food. Oh, can I have another one of these? Yes. Can I make it an extra large? Um, yeah, I'll get a Coke, right? Those are things that you can transfer from one restaurant concept to another. Another 20, 30% is uh, um, menu concept specific knowledge. So in this case, that's pizza. So, all right, yeah, I want an extra large pie. Um, I want, you know, a large pizza, what have you. So how do we make sure that that terminology is transferred so that the AI doesn't have to learn it all over again? So that's a big thing that we're tasked with. And then the next item is, of course, getting familiarized with that brand's specific menu. And we have a proprietary platform that we use to do exactly that. So, you know, there's just different training that the AI needs to get familiarized with those specific menu items. And we will run hundreds of thousands of scripts, right? So the AI does get effectively trained on virtually every euphemism um, and idiosyncrasy that a guest can use in ordering those specific items. So that's a technical item that we come across all the time, but it's nevertheless a challenge and it's something that we need to address. Those are just some of the, you know, some of the challenges that we're, that we're working through and they take time. Um, but that's why we foster these relationships with our customers so that we can proactively address their needs and make sure that our team is working on them, um, at all times. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that uh, it, what resonates with me is, is the people focus of all this and, um, how you're basically, you know, you're creating these relationships that's automated, but there's still some interaction, you know, on the consumer side, on the, on the employee side. So it, it's, it's trading two way, uh, communication, but it's really single, single point of contact of actually being live. Um, and you talked about, you know, a lot of the things you've overcome here. What was the, the breakthrough moment? I've got two questions here. I know we're running short on time, but sure. what was the breakthrough moment overall where you guys said, holy cow, like we got it. We figured it out we can do this, we can roll it out. Uh, I mean, you know, you mentioned Domino's, that's as big as it comes in the pizza space. So tell me about that. What was the breakthrough moment when you guys said, we got this figured out? Yeah, I, I would really say this was before um, I actually joined the company, but I would, I would really say that it was probably in the spring of 2020 when we, we had spent 18 months developing this AI in a cold, dark room. And then we released it to the world. And, you know, one of our very first Domino's franchisees, um, you know, he owns 21 stores and he, he flipped on the switch and it was just that, that silence of, is this going to work? And lo and behold, it did. And it worked dramatically well to the point of completely changing the lives of his staff of his customers, of him, right? Easing such a burden that was placed on him that was not just caused by the pandemic, but by just the, the difficulties and, and the gaps of operating a restaurant overall. And that the, the light was just, it was like this light was cast down upon us saying, yeah. this is a business in, in, in addressing the restaurant industry as a whole that unfortunately is plagued with problems, every business is, but yeah. there has been so many problems that have existed for years, decades, um, that this technology is now that miracle pill to solve. Yeah. So that was, that was that big, like awe inspiring moment. And look, a year later, we went from being in a couple dozen stores to being in hundreds of stores. Right. Uh, so, yeah. you know, and then 2021, we, we saw 12x growth and then we brought on new brands. Um, and then this year, right, we were, were in various stages of development with 
a lot of other Domino's size customers. And it's just here to show that this technology is something that is truly changing the landscape of restaurants. Yeah. How, how are you guys differentiating yourselves and, and setting yourselves apart from other people that are playing in this category? So with regards to competition in the restaurant voice AI space, there's a number of groups that have emerged to serve restaurants. And a lot of them are, are like us in that they are solely dedicated to voice AI for restaurants. There's a couple larger ones that serve multiple verticals because they, they're just larger organizations and the jury is out on what they will do. But we set ourselves apart in a couple things that I, I think we've really already covered, but first and foremost, it's in our service. Um, we are a guest centric company. We value the guest experience as much as any of the restaurants that we serve. And we think about that guest experience in how we originally designed our AI and in how our AI works in each of their individual stores. So that that guest experience remains preserved and in many cases enhanced um, from what they had before. So look, the shift toward technology is a very big move for a lot of restaurants because the restaurant industry is traditionally behind the curve when it comes to technology adoption. Yeah. And it's a lot of that is well-founded. They want to make sure that they're preserving that high touch element to the business. So we want to give that to them. So by having a dedicated customer success team, a dedicated engagement team, um, a dedicated product analyst team where we are actively surveying guests with their permission to ask them about what they like about the AI, what they don't like about the AI, how we can improve, right? So that the restaurants don't have to because it's not their responsibility. We want to, we have in-house teams to make sure that the product and service we're offering is exactly what guests want and even addressing needs guests didn't even know they have. So that would be one element. And then from the performance side, you know, I touched on this data modes that we've created. When, when you're live in 1200 stores, you get a lot of data. We process millions of conversations every single month. Each of those conversations is another data point on how to fix a minor utterance here and there and really just seal so many cracks in, in, in a system to automate the extremely open-ended process of person-to-person -person dialogue. If you just think about the conversation that you have with a person, how weird would it be to say like, hello, how are you doing today? I am doing well. How are you? No, it's even if you ask a yes, no an uh, question, people aren't going to give you a yes, no answer. They're going to go off onto a tangent. So how does our AI take that to consideration and then extract those nuggets of information that translate into pulling an order into the POS, right? That's what we're doing. And that's what all this data is allowing us to do. And because we have so much data, our AI is just continuing to accelerate um, at, a, at, a, at a quicker and quicker rate that the competition just simply doesn't have the data to, to keep up with. So. Those would be the two things that I would, I would highlight. Um, but what I will also say is that, you know, we have a great deal of respect and admiration for our competitors because we're, we're all after the same goal of enhancing the restaurant industry and, and equipping restaurants with the resources they need in order to remain sustainable, both operationally and financially for the future. Yeah. No, we, we appreciate everything and uh, we're excited to see where you guys go and, and the future looks bright. Um, I think that, you know, we talk about the the trends here and, and you guys get it that I don't think this is the uh, the downshift in the labor market. I think it's the just the market it's the way is where it's at. And I think um, as we head into this next economic wave, no matter how you want to define it, I think uh, the restaurant space and the, the quick service and the pizza people are still going to do great because it's, it's easier, it's more efficient and effective to, you know, do takeout. There's a lot of opportunity for you guys to continue to, to grow and maybe 12 X, you know, from a year ago is 25 X next year and so on. So I think the sky's the limit, uh, and we're excited to see where you go. So, uh, Ben, it was great talking to you today. We appreciate your time and look forward to, uh, talking to you again in the future. Much appreciated. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you.